Hey everyone, I'm Tom Salta. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn Logic Pro into a post-production powerhouse and save countless hours of monotonous work in the process. I use Logic Pro not only to create music, but also in post-production. So once those mixes are done, I will export all of them and I can do my cut downs or just edits of the tracks themselves or mastering so that they can all be exported for various albums or soundtracks or libraries. And I'm going to show you my brand new time-saving method for how I do that now in Logic Pro. Are you ready? So what you're looking at now is my Logic project for the mastering of the soundtrack to the game I scored, The Outlast Trials, which will be releasing this October. So I did all of the mastering inside Logic Pro, and there were over 100 individual sound files that I wanted to combine into a linear soundtrack. Now, most people won't have something quite as complex as this, especially if you're just doing more of a traditional album where you have 10 or 12 pieces of music and you just want to put each one on a separate track and you know master EQ it whatever and then export all 10 tracks but I'm going to show you something that goes well beyond that and you can apply the same techniques to whatever kind of collection you have that you want to export in Logic Pro so let me show you what I do okay so let's start with the most basic thing which is the first track the main theme right so here we go this is the main theme <laughs> And I applied some uh, processing on there to get just the right dynamics and EQ. In this case, it's right down here. You can see them on that audio channel. And those are dedicated just to the main theme, nothing else. Uh, I also, if I zoom in on this a little bit, you'll see that I actually added a little extra silence at the end and uh, the beginning, right? Just to make sure that there was at least that two second silence when the track is over. Okay, so I have the length right and I have it sounding the way I want. Now before we move on to the next track, the last thing to make sure that we have right is that I have the track named correctly as I want it to be listed on the actual file itself. So right here it's let the trials begin. Now you will notice that in this case I have a track inside a track stack. Even though it's only one track in there, this is so that I can keep the file names the way I want, but I can come up with a completely different name when it gets exported. And I'll show you why I do that when it comes to the exporting stage. So now let's move on to another track. Sometimes in this case, I will take two or more tracks and arrange them linearly or horizontally one after the next. In this case, there's a track on the soundtrack called the root canal right here. Now, if I were to zoom in on that one, you would see right here that these are two separate tracks. And I like to keep track of which files I'm using because a lot of times they do change or get updated. So in this case, I'm using the intro version two, and then I'm using this one, which is the looping section. So basically this track is gonna be these two things combined. So then what I'll do is I'll put them into a folder stack Okay, now they're combined, and I can now do the same thing I did before. So if I hit set locators and hit play or bounce, it's going to play both of those tracks one after the next as one entire stereo mix. And again, it's really important that the track stack is named exactly the way that you want the audio file to be named when it's exported. And what's great about doing it this way is it's completely independent of the names of the contents, all right? So there you go, that's gonna be the name of the actual file for the soundtrack. Now the last example of how I will arrange music for a video game soundtrack is by doing it vertically, meaning layering multiple cues on top of each other uh, to play at the same time. So if I expand everything, I can quickly identify right here, this one. The weight of memories is a combination of all of these combined, and that's really because it works in the game that way. So let me just show you how I expand upon this, and these tracks are layered together. Now you might say, well, why? Why are they all playing at the same time? Well, because they are actually used as tension layers, and you can kind of see here that I put some automation so it starts 
with just the heartbeat and then progress with one thing being played at a time. That's this with this layered and then this comes in and this on top and then this and whatever. So basically I'm assembling this piece of music from multiple cues, right? And in doing so, um, I can put them all into a single track stack, collapse them together, and now there I have it. So I do the same method here. So let's set locators. And when I hit play, it combines it all into a single stereo mix. So I will do that with the entire soundtrack. And if you were to expand all of these track stacks, you would see everything that's going on. You'd see each track and layers and one after the other, and they're all named and I can collapse them this way. And this becomes my actual track list with the titles that I want. Now, this is where it gets really interesting and the time saving fun begins. Now, remember, I told you it's all about naming your track stacks correctly, the way that you want them to uh, appear uh, in the file names themselves. OK, so I make sure that all the capitalization is the way I want it and what have you. Um, you might notice that I put some dividers in here to maybe arrange them. In this case, I wanted to know the areas of the game where they were uh, from and this way, but I turned that off. And you'll see why I turn it off in a moment. Now in the past, the only way to export all of this is to go one at a time, set the locators. And if you have like tracks on top of each other like this, which some people do, then you have to make sure that you actually hit the solo button, right? Hit bounce. Make sure your settings are the way you want it. In this case, I'd say 44 and 16 bit, and I'd hit OK, and then I'd have to type the name, right? Type the name, let the trials begin, whatever, and make sure I, oh, why? I left the caps thing on, right? So whatever, you have to go through this process, and depending on how many tracks you'd have, you'd have to do this, you know, in my case, this would be like 35 times, but no more, and here's how. <laughs> Enter auto bounce. Now, the key thing before you start using it is you want to make sure that the tracks are set up so that every track you want to export is on its own track stack or track and named the way you want. And only the things that you want to bounce should be on, right? This is going to save you more and more time, and I'll show you how. So right now, this is going to be the first thing that bounces, and it's the first thing that's on, right? Let the trials begin then it's going to skip the one that's off. It's going to go here, forget the pass, triage, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just kind of just going down the list like this. They're all named properly. It's going to skip the ones that are off. So watch what happens when you launch auto bounce. So it's going to scan all the tracks, and it's going to also scan the state of the tracks and the track stacks and note which ones are on and off and it's going to put it back exactly the way it found it. So watch what happens now. So now check this out. Since we set up logic the way we did, auto bounce is scanned and now is only showing what's going to be exported because all the other stuff was turned off. You can see what was turned off by pushing this button, but this represents the entire track list ready to go. Okay? So now what we want to do if we just want to export the entire track list is this. One, you want to make sure that the start and end range contains all of the tracks that you want to bounce, which mine does. Secondly, you want to make sure your bounce parameters are set the way you want them. So in this case, we're going to go offline. I want to do 24-bit 48K. And I am going to want to do an extra MP3 pass to save time because Logic has that built in, right? And now I'm going to name the job folder the way I want those files to be labeled. So in this case, I'm just going to say... OST, and it's going to be uh, 48K 24 bit, right? That's the folder name that all these are going to go into. I hit select all, and here's the magic setting very start and end mode. Okay, this is going to automatically look at the start and end point of each track or track stack and set the start and end point for the bounces accordingly. It's pretty magical. Now, this right here would take me a half hour to do manually if I was just going doing it myself. Now I want to do it again, 
because quite often when you're doing a soundtrack, uh, you know, you want to have the the ones that are converted to 44.1 and 16-bit. All right, so I'll just name a different folder that way. Make sure it's in stem mode, in very start and end mode, and then change the settings right here because these settings are all per job. So now I'm going to change the resolution to 16-bit. 44.1, turn off MP3s because we already have a set. Okay, and then also I want these tracks to be numbered. So I go to the naming convention editor and I'm going to add sequence number, then the track name. I'm going to change it to a dash. Now I forgot to do that in the first job, so you can actually copy and you can go to this job. I could just paste it in, right? Hit the dash, ready to go. So now that's a preview of the way the file name is going to be. Okay, so just double check, make sure all the settings are right, offline, offline, there it is. Okay, and now I'm gonna hit bounce and I could walk away from the computer and let auto bounce do this for me. So as we get started, you're gonna see now this whole new very start and end mode thing, which is pretty amazing. So you can see it automatically sets the start and end points with the locators there, and that's gonna turn into uh, the way the file is gonna be named. It's naming the file, it's gonna be bounced out and put into that folder. And there you go, the first bounce is done. It also converted to MP3, and now it's gonna go on to track number two. You can see what it's doing. Now remember, look, it's gonna grab the name of the track stack because that's what I have selected. And this way the files get named perfectly every time and you don't have to worry about it. And this is just gonna keep going. It's gonna do 35 tracks, two sets of them. Completely automated without me having to sit here and do it manually, giving me at least an hour of my life back. So I'll stop this here and we'll come back when it's done. And that is it. Auto Bounce is returning logic to its original state. And we are done, ladies and gentlemen. So check this out. We now have two folders. One 48K 24-bit and one 44K 16-bit files. You can see the entire soundtrack right here. If I open this up, Sort them by name, you can see they're numbered. We can go through the whole thing. And it was all done completely automatically. You can see here that it started, the first bounce was at 642, and the last bounce was at almost 730. So that took auto bounce 45 minutes. That would have taken me longer because of all the additional time I would have had to spend naming things. And then not to mention just sitting around and waiting. So basically auto bounce just gave me an hour of my life back. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.